Say hello to a new friend on an old road. Take a two lane trip of memories into mysteries unknown. Come along for the ride. Jim Hinckley's America. Jim Hinckley's America. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hey, it has been a frosty start to a new year here in Kingman, Arizona. Yesterday, when temperatures uh, were hovering around 20 degrees, the cup of coffee during our Coffee with Jim program was greatly appreciated. Hey, uh, last week on Wake Up with Jim, the theme was inspirational people. Folks like uh, Ralph Teeter, the blind inventor that came up with the idea for cruise control, Today, we kick off a new week of programs about interesting Route 66 roadside history with a little road trip inspiration from our theme song from Joe, Woody, and the boys of the road crew. Hey, if you need a theme song for your epic road trip adventure, look no further than roadcrew66.com. John Mulligan arrived in Northwest Arizona in the 1870s. About the same time that John W. Watt Thompson came to the Arizona Territory from New Brunswick, Canada, Mulligan, a stonemason by trade, quickly learned that there was more money in applying his skills than in mining or prospecting, even though he had been moderately successful in both pursuits. According to his obituary published in the Mojave Miner in 1935, in 1883, on the southwest corner of what is now Beale and 4th Street, Mulligan built the first house in a rough-and-tumble Atlantic and Pacific Railroad construction tent camp that would be known as Kingman. The obituary also noted a few of his other contributions to the development of the city. He was the primary contractor for the Hotel Beale and Hotel Brunswick. He was also a charter member of the Elks Lodge, and he was the contractor that built the lodge that stands on the corner of Forest and Oak Street. The obituary says that he laid some of the stone with his own hands. He was also the concrete contractor for the Mojave County Jail, built between 1909 and 1910. On an array of projects, including mining, property speculation, and construction, he partnered with John Thompson. In 1907, the partners began work on their most ambitious project to date, the construction of a stylish modern hotel on Front Street in the same block as the Hotel Beale. Named the Brunswick by Thompson, when completed in 1909, this would be the first three-story building in Kingman. Using locally quarreled tufa stone from the Metcalf Quarry, Thompson and Mulligan planned for this to be one of the finest hotels in the northwest part of the territory. After completion of the hotel, work began to make it competitive with the neighboring Hotel Beale. The newspaper article dated February 1911 noted that John Mulligan's return to Kingman. He had been in Los Angeles purchasing fine furnishings for the third floor of the hotel. In 1912, the Mulligan and Thompson partnership unraveled. Speculation for the split continues to this day, but the actual reasons are lost to history. Reportedly, the men would never speak again. The Hotel Brunswick was divided, literally, with construction of a wall that separated the building into equal halves. The agreement reached gave each partner 25 hotel rooms. Mulligan was also given the original lobby and the bar. Thompson acquired the restaurant. Now, oddly enough, it appears that somehow the hotel operated under a single name, Hotel Brunswick. In the summer of 1915, Edsel Ford and a few college buddies set out from Dearborn on a grand adventure. The destination was the Panama Pacific Exposition in San Francisco, but like an increasing number of tourists, they set out to see the exotic cultures of Santa Fe and the Pueblos in New Mexico, the natural wonders of sites such as the Grand Canyon and Painted Desert. They were also attractions. 
In Seoul, they followed the National Old Trails Road to Los Angeles before proceeding up the Pacific Coast. Ford's travel journal entry for Thursday, July 15, 1915, reads, Got going from Williams about 11, had lunch at Ash Forks, loafed along, found it very hot, bought some gas and oranges at Seligman, Stutz broke another spring and returned to Seligman, Cadillac and Ford went on to Kingman, arriving at midnight, Brunswick Hotel. Attesting to the hotel's prominence, the Hotel Garage Service Station and AAA Club Directory, published in 1927, listed two recommended lodging options in Kingman, the Hotel Beale at $1.50 to $3 per night, and the Hotel Brunswick at $1 per night. Evidence of its decline is found in the Directory of Motor Courts and Cottages, published by AAA in 1940. The hotel is no longer listed. Mulligan sold his portion of the property in about 1925. It sold again in about 1928, and the Brunswick name was dropped, and it became the Ideal Hotel. Then in 1930, it was sold again. An article published in the Mojave Miner in November of that year noted, quote, the name Hotel Brunswick has been restored to what is now known as the Hotel Ideal. It was announced on Wednesday this week by George LaPlante, manager. It was also noted that extensive work to modernize the hotel was underway. It was during this period that the distinctive but dated appearing front portico with balcony was removed and the neon sign was added. In the years that followed, several cafes operated from the former restaurant, including Scudder's, Richie's, and Lockwood's Chicken in the Rough. There is another celebrity association with this old hotel. Local legend has it that Clark Gable and Carol Lombard attended a brief reception at the bar after marrying at the St. John's Methodist Episcopal Church in March 1939. The Thompson side of the hotel was sold to Joe Otero in 1959. After a remodel, he opened the El Mojave restaurant. It proved to be a popular eatery for locals and for travelers on Route 66, and it was also a favorite of Senator Barry Goldwater when he was in Kingman. In 1966, Otero purchased the rest of the property and closed the hotel, he also removed the dividing wall on the first floor and linked to the bar and restaurant. The restaurant closed in 1980. The hotel was left vacant until 1994 when it was acquired by Priscilla and Rennie Davis. Restoration commenced with rebuilding the staircase in its original configuration and replacement of the portico and balcony. For a brief time, the hotel, bar, and restaurant were again for open for business along Route 66. It proved to be a short-lived endeavor. In 1998, the hotel again closed. A series of new owners purchased the property with plans for renovation and restoration of businesses. But it was not until 2012 when it was acquired by Werner Fleischmann, a Swiss developer, that intermittent work commenced in earnest. The historic Brunswick Hotel is one of the points of interest in the self-guided, narrated historic district walking tour in Kingman, Arizona. This innovative project being developed by Kingman Main Street is a virtual as well as in-person tour. A sample tour can be viewed at kingman.tours. The first phase of the project, scheduled for completion by late April 2022, is expected to include 40 points of interest. Okay, well, my friends, it looks like it's time to bid adios for today. I hope you can join me in the morning for another episode of Wake Up With Jim. Before I go, let me give a shout out to Uranus Fudge Company and General Store along Route 66, now Highway Z, just east of St. Robert, Missouri. <coughs> this is a destination. This is an experience. This is where memories are made. This is where fun remains and runs supreme. This is home to some of the best fudge on earth. And soon, you can experience all the fun of Uranus in Anderson, Indiana at their new location. Did you know that you can order their delicious fudge, zany souvenirs, or a copy of the Uranus Examined newspaper at www.uranusgeneralstore.com? And just think, in 2022, not one, but two Uranus Fudge Company and General Stores where you can make memories with your family. See you tomorrow, amigos. Good morning, Mike. I hope you enjoyed the program this morning.
Say hello to a new friend on an old road. Take a two-lane trip of memories into mysteries unknown. Come along for the ride. Jim Hinckley's America. Jim Hinckley's America. Ha <laughs>